video games have become desperate to be considered an art form. Part of the desire stems from the creators. If the video game developers who create virtual worlds and characters and stories and images and sounds and music want to call themselves artists, that sounds pretty much like an accurate title for that description. The other part of the desire comes from us, the consumers. We know the worlds and characters and stories and images and sounds and music the video game developers are capable of creating, and I think it makes perfect sense that we want video games to be considered art. There is a significant connotative consequence of calling this interactive media a game. Last Day of June is a narrative-based puzzle adventure game developed by Ovo Sonico and released for PlayStation 4 and PC in 2017 and for the Switch in 2018. And if the people who create video games prefer to be called artists and the people who consume video games want to say they're consuming art, this all seems reasonable. The problem is the medium itself not the human beings perceiving it. Last Day of June is a video game that is desperate to be considered art. It resists almost all video game tropes and subverts the tropes that it can't avoid. Every frame of gameplay is heavily scripted and intentionally cinematic. Even its extremely short runtime feels like a purposeful decision. However, we are not here to determine if Last Day of June succeeds at its lofty goal of transcending the medium of video games. I'm not presumptuous enough to judge if anything actually qualifies as art or not. Until the landscape shifts dramatically, Last Day of June is indeed a video game and, as always, we are here to answer one important question. How chill is Last Day of June? The standard chill rating system breaks down the qualities that pertain to a chill video game experience. All categories will be scored 0 through 5 and the end result will be multiplied by 2 to award a chill score out of 100 total points. From the opening moments of booting up the game, it's pretty much impossible to ignore the visual aesthetic of Last Day of June, so we'll begin our analysis with its art direction. In the context of the game, the majority of the playable world is taking place in a weird combination of memory and flashback. The background always feels a little out of focus and this effect bleeds into the foreground too. The intended outcome is a visual style that conveys an ethereal, dreamlike quality. For some players, this might end up being the case, but for me, the result is merely a resolution that appears soft and muddy, and more like a PlayStation 3 game than a PlayStation 4 game. When the game shifts settings to what is easiest described as present reality, it's still tainted by what can only be explained as the supernatural or maybe hallucinations. For whatever reason, besides the change from daytime to nighttime, there really aren't any visual cues that might indicate separate realities. Another detriment to the visual style of the game is the way the characters are drawn. Obviously, the creators made the choice to forego including facial features in their character designs. This is a transparent attempt by the developers to add another layer to their experimental storytelling. In this case, proving that the context of the story and the universal body language of human beings is more than enough to convey everything we need to know about how the characters are feeling. A real game critic might have a different opinion of this tactic, but regarding a chill experience, the faces never stopped being creepy for me during my time with the game. The game deals with heavy topics and a lot of death, and while I don't believe the intent was ever to be spooky in any way, the truth is that removing, manipulating, or mutilating the distinguishing human facial features is a tried and true way of portraying like horror movie villains. When not being unsettled by the character models and not being slightly nauseated by the camera's inability to focus and sharpen the picture, the muted fall setting does lead to some serene moments. I will say that it's on the player to seek these moments out and that they are not actually led to them via gameplay, but this is not a bad thing at all. I am more than okay with each player forging her or his own experience for every game. Putting these mixed elements together equals neither a truly chill nor truly disturbing art style, but something that is uncomfortably in the middle. Last Day of June receives a chill rating of 3 for its art style. Where the images on the screen fall short of the desired dreamlike quality, the music is more successful in establishing a chill mood while playing. The entire soundtrack was created by Steven Wilson and, perhaps surprisingly, 
is not ubiquitous while playing. Long stretches of gameplay and even some cinematic cutscenes are devoid of a traditional musical score. When the music does make itself known, it does so with traditional orchestral sounding instruments that cause even some distressing scenes to be translated to the screen in a gentler way. Because the music never comes across as jarring, unwelcome, or repetitive, we can award the full chill rating of 5 for the music. Last Day of June takes place in Autumn. June is the name of a character who dies one day and then, when that day is repeated more than a dozen times during gameplay, dies more than a dozen times. This sounds like classic roguelike territory, but this really isn't the vibe that the game is going for. Instead, it plays each death as a tragedy, which, in the context of the story, it surely is. The goal of the game is to rearrange the events of the past to prevent June's death, and the harsh lesson we and the main character learn together is that, no matter how many times we go back and alter the events that led to the accident, circumstances are also rearranging so the accident is caused some other way. This raises a heavy topic that is conducive especially to video games, Determinism versus free will. While I intend to dive deep into this discussion in an upcoming video, for now I will say that combining the unavoidable tragic death of a loved one with deep philosophical conundrums does not make for a chill playthrough. The story content of Last Day of June receives a chill score of zero. The game utilizes an unorthodox structure that belies both creativity and deliberate avoidance of video game tropes. The roguelike description is accurate in the sense that we are absolutely meant to try and fail and restart, and in each subsequent attempt we'll be armed with the knowledge of the previous run. Unfortunately for Last Day of June, the game chooses not to use traditional language. The characters speak a version of The Sims' garbled nonsense, and again, I understand that this is intended to be a statement about the universality of the human experience. But that does not negate how much the silly, non-dialogue detracts from the somber tone of the game. In relation to a chill experience, the game's refusal to use words also means that we are never told explicitly what we're supposed to do, and this can lead to a 3 hour experience needlessly becoming a frustration filled 5 hour experience. The main issue with the quest design is there are no cues to tell the player if we're doing something correctly or not. And if we are creating the correct choices, and the only way to know is to play out the entire day, this leads to an unwelcome amount of unskippable cutscenes and a potentially infinite amount of repeated content. By no means am I suggesting that the game should lead the player by the hand to the solution. The problem is, with this game, I honestly believe it's possible that a not so observant player might have no idea what the game is asking them to do in order to advance. Last Day of June receives a chill rating of 0 for its quest design. The final story related category is pacing, and this is where Last Day of June regains some of its chill factor. Provided the player understands how to progress the game, the pacing of the story is one of its strengths. When a puzzle is solved correctly, in other words, when the correct sequence of events plays out in the altered past, the tragedy plays out and a new path is unlocked in the way of a new magical painting. Armed with the knowledge of how to advance, my second playthrough of this game took about three and a half hours from start to completion. This is significantly shorter than the longest American theatrically released film and, in video game terms, three and a half hours is lightning fast. What keeps Last Day of June from achieving the full chill rating for pacing is the content being unavoidably repeated ad nauseum. Even given the short runtime by the last puzzle painting, I would bet that every player is okay with never walking around this minuscule town ever again. It's remarkable that a game can be less than 4 hours and not leave the player wanting more. It's not very relaxing to desperately hope the end of the game is going to happen in the next 5 minutes. I'm also looking at you, Haven. And it's definitely not chill to prolong that feeling with unskippable cutscenes bracketing every section of gameplay. Last Day of June receives a chill score of 3 for pacing. Last Day of June is a joy to play in terms of cold hard functional mechanics. Movement is smooth and the camera is responsive. It transitions so smoothly from a scripted cutscene to a gameplay scene that I found myself watching the player character do nothing for a few moments before realizing I was supposed to be playing. 
These smooth transitions and simple button functions make for a very easy learning curve. The first few minutes of the game are meant to introduce us to the characters and their relationship, and so it's to the game's benefit that we are not distracted with clumsy button layouts. I would love to give a full chill rating for mechanics because the puzzles themselves don't require any additional buttons or actions from us. Solving the puzzle happens simply by walking around and playing out our actions, using X the entire time to interact with anything in the world. Unless I'm forgetting some one-off instance, I'm pretty sure the only other face button we are asked to use is the square button to enter a painting. The problem here is what I described before in the story section. The puzzles themselves also serve as a game mechanic and these puzzles are never defined, no instruction is ever given, and progression can be halted because of this crucial choice about how the game communicates with the player. I award a chill rating of 3 for the mechanics. There are no fail states in the game. Nothing we do during gameplay will result in our character dying. The restarts we experience are resets of reality and part of the story. And even if this might technically count as a fail state if the right actions were not taken, there is no punishment inflicted upon us. Though I might be able to argue that the game would be better if there were some way we could die and hard reset if we want to discard our choices or if we entered the wrong painting, from a chill perspective, an entire playthrough with no combat or ledges to fall from receives the full score of 5. The game actively resists a lot of video game tropes, but for some reason, Last Day of June embraced the one trope that probably annoys me the most, the autosave. Because the game refuses to give traditional instructions, I don't believe it's ever communicated to us how the saving system works. In the interest of making this video, I of course did experiment to see how it worked and it's actually pretty cool. When we exit the game and then jump back to continue our progress, we actually restart NMedia Res from the beginning of the chapter. This is a technical flourish that I can absolutely appreciate. The issue is the game gives no reassurance to the player that this is what will happen when we exit the game. The menu doesn't show us a save file and thus gives us no timestamp or indication that our progress is actually saved. It's also worth mentioning that if we exit the game while we are in the middle of a task, Reloading into the game will start us at the beginning of that scene, not where we left off. This is somewhat forgivable because the game is so short it could easily be finished in one sitting and some players might never need to save and exit. This approach to saving will receive a chill rating of 2. I saved the technical aspects for last because, as is the best case scenario for a video game, there isn't a whole lot for me to say here. While I know it sounds like I am scrutinizing the creative choices of the developers quite a lot, I cannot do the same for their technical implementation of those ideas. I played the game two and a half times on my PlayStation 5 to get the footage for this video, and I experienced no crashes and I believe I experienced zero bugs or glitches as well. Yes, it's true that the game isn't pushing any hardware limits, but the consistently smooth frame rate was refreshing, even amongst smaller linear games. The game is designed simply with a total of maybe 5 different settings in which the game takes place, but regardless of its simplicity, everything in the game functioned for me exactly as intended. Given the obtuse and ill-defined nature of the puzzles and having to reset reality in order to advance, if any of the decisions, interactions, or changes failed to function how they needed to, a simple glitch or bug could easily be game-breaking. We can award the full chill rating of 5 each for crashes and bugs. Last Day of June goes out of its way to be cinematic and artistic and in doing so, wildly misses the mark of what makes video games stand out as art. I see art in the controlled chaos on screen while destroying a room full of enemies in Hades. I see art in the painstakingly detailed craftsmanship and the dialogue choices in Disco Elysium. I view a game like Last Day of June as the video game equivalent of, like, a sappy Hallmark movie. It's not that I am unwilling to invest myself in a video game story. I continue to spend my time playing interactive story games and making videos about them because I thoroughly enjoy losing myself in a video game narrative. After compiling the separate categories, Last Day of June achieves an overall chill score of 62 out of 100. And this might be the first game I've reviewed that the chill rating is drastically higher than the overall quality rating I would assign if I were a real video game reviewer. 
At best, last day of June comes off as sanctimonious and here is probably the easiest and clearest proof of why. It wasn't until the end credits rolled and even then, halfway through the end credits that I learned the character I've been playing as for three hours is named Carl. This is a unique and compelling choice, like the story is bigger than just one character. It's a story of love and loss and sacrifice and it's timeless and faceless and transcends language and save files. But a player would have to be playing the game with their eyes closed to not know the name Massimo Guarini. By the end of the opening scene, the director's name has appeared on screen no less than five times. And predictably, his name is of course the very first name that appears upon completion. Video games are desperate to be viewed as art and I don't believe desperation is ever a positive trait. If the medium ever hopes to achieve the esteem that comes with a shift in perception from silly game to essential expression of the human condition, then I hope video game creators continue to lean into and embrace the things that actually make video games a unique way to tell and consume a story. If a game like Last Day of June had gotten its way and did become some kind of shining example of what a video game needs to be for it to be taken seriously, video games would be in legitimate danger of totally shunning the beautiful qualities that make them exceptional.